Hi, welcome to Books and Bocadillos. My name is Maria Andrea, and today I am setting off a chain of smaller, shorter videos, I hope, for the Poetry Readathon that is happening um, this week from today, Monday, April 22nd, until Sunday, April 28th. I will attempt to do a video a day for each of the prompts. So I will be going nine days, um, just two days longer. But um, this poetry readathon is hosted by Charlie at Charlie Brook Reads and Charlie at Charles Heathcote. I will link their channels in the description box. Um, so let me start out with um, the prompt that I'm going to talk about today is nature. In honor of Earth Day, I want to show you just three uh, poetry collections that are uh, very nature driven. And I'll share with you what I've read for this prompt and I'll read a poem. So, <laughs> excuse me, the three books that I want to share today are The Harding Kind by Ada Limon. And I will be reading um, a poetry from this collection. So this this collection is very nature driven, and the way that it's structured, it's structured by seasons. So if you've watched my channel for a few months, you know, like I've read the winter section, I've read the fall section. I think I started this in the fall officially. I may have read some of the poems in the summer, but I am I've. I just finished reading the spring section and then I'll be reading the summer section in full, revisiting it this summer. And then I'll be done with this collection. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh, I'll be reading a poem from here in just a little bit. A couple of other very heavy, uh, not heavy, but like nature driven books um, is The Wild Iris by Louise Gluck. And these are wonderful poems. I've like written in it, I've annotated it, I've dog-eared. I know some of you do not like to see that, but I really enjoyed this. This poem that I annotated was Matin. Matin. Um, I also noticed that the podcast, the Daily Poem podcast, um, they, they featured, I think the titular poem, The Wild Iris on the podcast today. So that was really great. Um, and she is a winner of the Nobel Prize for Poetry. And she's also the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. So I really like this collection. And then, of course, beloved Mary Oliver, I have this devotions book on my shelf. I actually have it in my uh, living room on a coffee table. I like visiting it uh, from time to time. And I mean, Mary Oliver writes a lot about nature. Sorry, I feel like I have to sneeze. I, I'm trying not to. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is a great collection. It's quite a vast array of poems. So back to Ada Limon, The Hurting Kind. The poem I want to share with you today is titled Drowning Creek. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Drowning Creek. Past the strip malls and the power plants, out of the holler, past Gun Bottom Road and Brassfield, and before Red Lick Creek, there's a stream called Drowning Creek, where I saw the prettiest bird I'd seen all year. The belted kingfisher, crested in its Asian blue plumage, perched not on a high snag, but on a transmission wire, eyeing the creek for crayfish, tadpoles, and minnows. We were driving fast toward home, and already our minds were pulled taut like a black, like a high black wire latched to a utility pole. I wanted to stop, stop the car, to take a closer look at the solitary, stocky water bird with its blue crown and its blue chest and its uncommonness. But already we were a blur and miles beyond the flying fisher. 
by the time I had realized what I'd witnessed. People were nothing to that bird, which wasn't concerned with history's bloody battles or why this creek was called Drowning Creek, a name I love, though it gives me shivers because it sounds like an order, a place where one goes to drown. The bird doesn't call the creek that, that name. The bird doesn't call it anything. I'm almost certain, though I am certain of nothing, there is a solitude in this world I cannot pierce. I would die for it. And that is The Drowning Creek by Ada Limon. And when I read this uh, poem earlier, it reminded me of that book that I was reading uh, yesterday that I um, featured in my previous video about five reads for Earth Day, and it was about the birds. Um, and how I mentioned I like to witness the whistling ducks when they fly overhead and how we're not a part of the consciousness, like the bird doesn't know, the whistling ducks maybe don't realize that I'm there in awe of their their song and I look for them and I they make my day and they have no awareness of that. Um, but how yet even then we're connected and I don't know. I thought it was a beautiful poem and it gave me a lot to meditate on. So happy Earth Day and happy Poetry Week. Let me know if you're participating and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Hasta la próxima.